Okay, friends, uh, uh, we have reached into the respiratory system at uh, the exchange of gases as we all know. So, today we are discussing about the exchange of gases specifically carbon dioxide and oxygen what we say the respiratory gases. So, if we see into the diagram there are two sites where exchange of gases is happening first site is lungs or first surface is alveolar surface at the lung into the alveoli. The oxygen from atmospheric air reaches to the blood and carbon dioxide from blood reaches to the environmental air. So, that is the first exchange of gases and it is happening inside the lungs. The other exchange of gases is happening at the level of the tissues or at the cells. So, cells of the tissue is getting oxygen from the blood and they are removing the carbon dioxide from them to the blood. So, these are the two sites where the exchange is going to happen. Now, this exchange of gases is done by various factors what we are discussing right now. The factors which are affecting the rate of exchange of gases that is the our prime concern of this lecture to understand all the factors which are responsible for exchange of gases. So, if I talk about the uh, exchange of gases of oxygen or carbon dioxide, the alveoli is the primary site or the first site where this gas is getting exchanged ready as we have just discussed here that lungs are the first site of get gaseous exchange ready the second site is which it is the tissue or cells of our organs various organs have various tissues which are doing this exchange of gases now lungs are responsible for absorbing oxygen from atmospheric air and that oxygen has to be reached to each part of your body, each tissues, each cells of your tissues. Why? Because in order to maintain homeostasis, cells of your body, of your tissue requires huge sort of energy and for that to get the energy, they requires uh, respiration of the respiratory. Uh, substrates that is primarily oxygen uh, sorry glucose. So, oxygen burns the glucose releases the energy into form of the ATP that ATP will be utilized into the various biochemical reactions in your body in your cells. So, cells are producing carbon dioxide those carbon dioxide which is toxic may be toxic where it is released into the uh, cytoplasm of the blood. So, it has to be eliminated, it has to be removed from the cells. So, that excess of the carbon dioxide has to be carried into the blood and that blood will carry the excess amount of carbon dioxide to the lungs and that will be removed out. So, that is how second exchange is happening into the tissues. Now, oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged by very simple mechanism that is simple diffusion and they are depending on four various factors. Number one, it is the pressure or concentration gradient. Number two, solubility of gases. Number three, thickness of the membrane and number four, increased surface area of the respiratory membrane that is by alveoli of lungs. So, these are the ma major four player which are affecting the rate of 
the exchange of gases when individually we are about to observe all these four factors so that we can conclude how much adaptation can be seen in our body in our respiratory system in order to this exchange of gases right is and when required you are supposed to take the screenshot so that you can easily make your own notes right fine if i talk about first <coughs> factor which is responsible for exchange of gases is pressure or concentration gradient right now what is pressure or what is gradient now pressure here into the terms of exchange of gases we are using the terminology called partial pressure and the meaning of partial pressure is it is individual pressure of single gas into mixture of gases and we are concerning about two types of gases right individual two types of gases number 1 oxygen number 2 carbon dioxide now the pressure of oxygen in a mixture is partial pressure of oxygen or in the other term po2 and pressure of carbon dioxide from mixture is pco2 or partial pressure of carbon dioxide so that is how we are supposed to remember these two terminology partial pressure of oxygen and partial pressure of the carbon dioxide right so po2 and pco2 now if individually we see the exchange so which are the region of exchange number 1 and exchange is happening of which kind of gases so we have two types of gases number 1 we have oxygen number 2 we have carbon dioxide now if first i am talking about the air which is entering into lungs is atmospheric air this is the first thing what i have to keep in my mind keep into my account this atmospheric air have pressure of oxygen 159 mmhg that is a standard measurement unit of the measuring or measurement of partial pressure mmhg so atmospheric air is having po2 at 159 mmhg and co2 carbon dioxide partial pressure in the atmospheric air is 0.3 mmhg now let me compare the cell of alveoli surface right cell of alveoli surface where exchange has to happen between these two in the alveoli the pressure of oxygen oxygen if you see po2 uh, is 104 mmhg and pco2 is 40 mmhg now we are supposed to compare both of them atmospheric air and alveoli if i compare partial pressure of oxygen between them highest or high level of pressure of oxygen is into the atmospheric air which is 159 and less into the alveoli that is 14 104 so oxygen is moving from its higher concentration or higher pressure to its lower concentration or lower pressure by diffusion so this is how due to the pressure or concentration gradient it is moving atmospheric air oxygen is moving to the alveoli now comes difference between blood which is entering into the capillary which is nearby to the alveoli surface 
into that blood partial pressure of oxygen is 40 and partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 45 again we need to compare the comparison of carbon dioxide uh, sorry uh, pressure of the oxygen is 104 in alveoli and 40 in oxygen in blood right it is called deoxygenated blood why because the level of oxygen is less than the level of carbon dioxide if you compare this both ready so that is why it is called deoxygenated blood so in deoxygenated blood you have less pressure of oxygen so oxygen is going to transport from alveoli or going to diffuse from alveoli to blood now in reverse way if I compare the partial pressure of carbon dioxide between all the surfaces what we have discussed till now right the atmospheric air and alveoli more pressure is at the alveoli so alveoli will release diffuse their carbon dioxide to the atmospheric air and blood will pass the carbon dioxide to the alveoli ready so this is how partial pressure or concentration gradient is important in order to maintain the exchange rate now this blood is going to circulate and circulated throughout the body now this blood is reaching to the tissue right reaching at the tissue before reaching it to the tissue before it enters the circulation it is changing deoxygenated blood is changing into oxygenated blood the alveoli is supplying oxygen to the deoxygenated blood so oxygenation so level of oxygen uh, oxygen is increased right level of oxygen is increased from 40 to 95 and level of carbon dioxide is decreased from 40 to uh, sorry 40 to 45 it is decreased now if you compare this both pressure of oxygen is comparatively higher than com uh, the pressure of the carbon dioxide that is why it is called oxygenated blood now and these oxygenated blood is going into the circulation to the tissues in tissue now if you see the pressure of oxygen is 40 pressure of carbon dioxide is 45 now comparison between both of them 95 and 40 so definitely oxygen is moving from blood to tissue and carbon dioxide is moving to cells from cells to the blood right so this is how the entire mechanism of parameter which is uh, regulating these uh, exchange of gases is difference in concentration or difference in pressure so this is simple mechanism which is actually regulating the entire mechanism of the transportation of various gases into your circulatory system right through your circulatory system uh, so this is one of the most important phenomena which is acting for uh, the exchange of gases right. please take this screenshot Uh, this is the same uh, what we have discussed just now now second factor which affects the rate of the exchange of gases is this solubility right so what is meaning of solubility it is ability of getting dissolved into the medium 
we have two substances one is oxygen one is carbon dioxide if i talk about solubility of carbon dioxide it is 20 to 25 percent more than of o2 so it is easily getting absorbed digest dissolve into the water and getting transport very easily but if i talk about the uh, the solubility of oxygen it is very less but our body's requirement is very rapid very fast so oxygen carrying capacity is not met with the ability or adaptation of blood itself that is why we have put a special mechanism we have developed a special mechanism we have evolved a special mechanism called the hemoglobin so molecule of hemoglobin is specially designated only for adaptation of transportation of oxygen as oxygen is less uh, efficient uh, 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 with respect to solubility in water. So, it cannot be able to uh, dissolve into the water and transport it from one place to the other. That is why we require a special adaptation. Fine, if I talk about the, uh, the entire mechanism, the amount of carbon dioxide can be diffused through diffusion into the membrane per unit and uh, uh, through the difference in the partial pressure which is very much higher compared to the oxygen right so carbon dioxide will be definitely moving into the tissues or into the blood through the simple diffusion why because it is easily diffusible due to the its solubility right so carbon dioxide is getting diffused or dissolved very easily because of its ability for dissolution so oxygen is not having that capacity that is why oxygen cannot be dissolved and cannot exchange very rapidly that is why we have developed special mechanism called the hemoglobin molecules Fine. so that is also one of the key feature of exchange mechanism <coughs> now third important aspect with respect to the exchange of gases is thickness of the membrane right if thickness is uh, uh, is more is membrane if tissue if uh, a particular thing is very thick diffusion is definitely uh, not rapid ready so we need to take care that the membrane which is responsible for exchange must be thinnest possible and majority of those kind of membranes tends to be single celled thick for an example if i see this is the alveolar cavity and this is the membrane of alveoli right it is the alveolar surface if you see it is single celled thick so this is the first membrane through which it has to travel the uh, the oxygen or carbon dioxide has to travel again the capillary which is reaching to it it is also if you see right it is second number membrane it is also single layered thickness is thinnest possible right? and third is the basement membrane which is lied in between both of them right it is in between both of them so this is a third layer it is also thinnest as possible so these three layers make thinnest possible membrane so that diffusion can take place easily and rapidly in order to maintain the higher rate of exchange of gases ready so diffusion membrane is made up of three layer number one thin squamous epithelium of alveoli number two endothelium blood capillaries number three basement substances between them all of them are very thin and that is why the thickness is very less 
and diffusion takes place very rapidly. Ready? So, if you calculate the total thickness which is described here, it is 0.5 micrometer which enables the easy gas exchange. Fine. Now comes the four import, fourth important mechanism or factor which is responsible. It is called surface area. So, if you think about the lungs, if you remember, if you uh, recall the structure of internal structure of lungs, they have huge quantity of the alveoli which is actually pouch like structure. Right? It is the pouch like structure. It is also having infolds. This increases the surface area. And also flexibility. Look, we have different types of uh, uh, requirement at a particular given time. For example, if I am resting, if I am sleeping, my metabolism drops down up to certain level. So, my oxygen demand decreases. So, rate of respiration decreases. Sometimes I have when I am for example, uh, playing a games on the ground exercising. So, my metabolism increases, my rate of respiration increases, my demand of oxygen increases and normally in normal state, I have a particular level of oxygen which is maintained into my body. So, based on my requirement of the body, respiratory system has to maintain the, rest of, uh, the, the rate of breathing or exchange of gases. That is why not only increase the surface area, but also flexibility is important. So, that is how this adaptation is maintained or developed, evolved. So, presence of alveoli increases the surface area of the lung and it increases the gas exchange. Right. So, very important feature and phenomena which is shown here, which is admitted here by uh, the higher level of the organisms, ready, uh, this uh, the surface of alveoli. So, that is four most important mechanism criteria which are uh, important for exchange of gases. Fine. So, these are the four major factors affecting the rate of respiration. Now, uh, if I talk about the uh, the transportation of gas, what is our next topic of discussion, right? So, transportation of gas, majority of uh, them is actually divided into two steps, main two steps. First step is the transportation between lungs and tissue right now lungs where atmospheric air is reaching it is carrying oxygen from the atmosphere and it is getting absorbed so there we have mentioned that it is a transportation of oxygen lungs absorb oxygen and make it available to the tissue cells of the tissues and that oxygen will be carried by the blood by physical solution into the blood plasma as the oxyhemoglobin 98.5 percent by oxygen which is getting by hemoglobin and only 1.5 percentage is by the physical solution that is into the dissolve. We have earlier discussed that oxygen is very less efficient right uh, when the uh, the matter comes 
in uh, towards the dissolution so they hardly dissolved so very less quantity now if i talk about the other mechanism or other mode of the transportation is from tissue to the lungs and we all know that our tissues our cells are metabolically active cells are as and when doing the metabolic activity they require huge quantity of energy in the form of atp and in order to get the atp they are supposed to oxidize the respiratory substances specifically ox uh, carbon dioxide uh, sorry uh, glucose so when they are burning the glucose they require oxygen which is uh, which is actually transported it is supplied to them so they use the oxygen they burn the glucose and they produce carbon dioxide definitely they produce atp but the by product is carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide is actually not acceptable molecule into the large quantity into the cytoplasm as it can be acidic when it is dissolved into the plasma sorry into the cytoplasm so their ph will be decreased the cytoplasm will become acidic that is why carbon dioxide which is produced will be transported out so blood will collect it and will make it available to lungs so that is why we have mentioned here it is the transportation of carbon dioxide from tissue to the lungs now these transportation will be into the three form number 1 carbonic acid number 2 carbamino hemoglobin and number 3 bar bicarbonates so oxygen transport is with two different uh, mechanism and carbon dioxide transport with three different mechanism we are supposed to uh, see them all individually but before that let me present you the diagram which is describing these three mechanisms right right this is the diagram which is describing uh, this mechanism of transport of the oxygen and carbon dioxide uh you have two medium here into the uh, diagram one is tissue one is blood blood which is there into the capillary and cell of the tissue right. fine so let me first introduce you the transportation of carbon dioxide so first mechanism of transport of the carbon dioxide is as dissolved gas that is co2 plus h2o nothing else right only 7 percentage of the carbon dioxide is transported through dissolved gas not more than that now second mode of transport carbamino compound right carbamino compound or by hemoglobin through through protein in short it is through protein either plasma protein or hemoglobin hemoglobin also as we know that it is protein so it is said to be commonly carbamino compounds right and third mechanism of transportation of carbon dioxide is oh sorry 23% is in the form of carbamino compound and majority that is 70% of carbon dioxide is transported in the form of bicarbonates right it is into the form of carbonates or bicarbonates so why if carbon dioxide we as we have seen earlier the carbon dioxide can easily dissolve into the water then also it is not getting transported in the form of simple diffused gas a reason behind that is if you compare the if you see this diagram and if you see the equation here 
carbon dioxide when it is dissolved into the water getting converted into the carbonic acid and if it is dissolved into the water getting mixed and react with the uh, the water present into the medium it is converted into the carbonic acid which will lower the ph that will disturb entire mechanism either if it is uh, happening into the cell so it it disturbs the cellular mechanism if it is happening into the blood it is definitely rupturing the biochemical reactions within the blood so it is not allowed and that is why only 7% is transported as dissolved carbon dioxide rest of them either it will be accepted by protein or it will be converted into the carbonic compounds ready so that has to be remembered by you each of you now this mechanism which is described into the diagram is very 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 important with respect to need so you are supposed to remember ready now second number transportation of o2 ready transportation of o2 it is of two type number one majority of the organ that is nearly 90 per 99 percent 98.5 percent it is by hemoglobin and only 1.5 percent is in the dissolved state so that's the two simple mechanism with reference to oxygen ready so this is how the uh, account of the transportation of various molecules that is by dissolved carbon dioxide carbamino compounds uh, bicarbonates uh, hbo that is oxyhemoglobin or dissolved oxygen this oxygen and carbon dioxide is getting transported from one place to the other one organ to the other so it is playing a very important role in exchange of the gases right now we are supposed to go through individual transport of oxygen and individual transport of carbon dioxide and what are the factors which are playing a role into them but that will be into the next lecture so transport of gases till this slide we are actually uh, keeping this into this lecture later on we are going moving ahead right from the transport of individual transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide into the next slide so i'll see you there bye have a nice time